Got my first squirrel. It's right over here. It's running along. My name is Espen Helland and I'm an OM system ambassador and wildlife photographer. So today I'm going to have a look at the OM5 and just trying it out for wildlife photography. So I wanted to just try out the OM5 for wildlife photography. For me who's quite serious about wildlife photography, I would usually go for my OM1. But when I'm traveling lightly, I might reach for this as a second body. I might be vlogging with this, but then if I encounter a lot of action and I need different focal lengths, I can use them my OM5, put my 4150 on that, and I'll use my 300 on my OM1. And that way, I can kind of carry a lot of gear with me into the field, but weighing very little, and I can do all my vlogging and all my wildlife photography. This is also a camera for the recreational user who the experience matter more, but you probably do want a camera that you can also take some good wildlife images with. So the purpose of this video is just to show you how I get on with the OM5 when using it for wildlife photography. getting into the hide but the squirrels are getting so used to me now that I probably don't even need to hide and it just started feeding right on here look at this all right let's back away a little bit I've been photographing a lot with the 300 millimeter f4 I have been photographing a little bit with my 40 to 150 f 2.8 but OM system has also sent me the 40 to 150 f4 which is a tiny lightweight lens it is under 400 grams I thought I might just try this out as well for wildlife photography for the people who you know might be considering the OM5 as a kind of an all-round camera the 4150 f4 can be a good choice as you can see here this is just the smallest thing and I can see this being quite a nice little lens if you're just out walking you're walking in the hills or something like that and you want to have a lens with at least the opportunity to photograph some wildlife you know for larger mammals a lens like this could be fine it's only for the small stuff here we do have to get quite close so i'm going to pull my chair up a little bit closer and hope that these squirrels are quite used to me now which i think they are i've had loads of close encounters with them now All right, let's get a bit closer made a little bit of noise here moving about so I'm just gonna take it easy I'm gonna get a cup of coffee and just wait for some squirrels to come back I can hear that there's jays nearby, so I figured let's go in the hide and hope that they show up because I can't sit outside with the jays around uh, if I want them to come down here. They would never land here if I was outside. Let's go inside. Oh, it's amazing. It's just running along the trunk here. So that's probably like eight meters. Maybe six or seven, actually. And we're getting more of an environmental image of the squirrel in the scene. I 
you know, four small birds, you're gonna have to get really close with the 4150, which is equivalent up to 300 millimeter full frame. Um, so for small birch, we're talking a couple of meters. And if you're out hiking and, you know, you get bigger animals like deer, or moose or anything, then, you know, you, this is a perfectly fine lens to bring along, seeing how lightweight it is. Uh, one thing to keep in mind though, it is not compatible with the adapter. So you won't be able to get any more reach out of this. Like maximum, the 150 equivalent 300 is what you get. Um, but it's a slightly more affordable lens and it comes in such a small package than the 4150 f2.8. So I would say it's a nice lens that you can have if you're not super serious about wildlife photography, it's something you do every now and then, and you're okay with getting very close to small birds or photographing more mammals or bigger subjects. And if you're pho photographing other things, you know, this would be a great landscape lens for up in the mountains. So I'm quite liking this. I'm liking trying it out. It's so light. It is ridiculous. So the way I thought I would do this is that I just go through some of the features that are important to me for wildlife photography. So we might as well start with the basics, getting an exposure. Well, like all the home system cameras and mirrorless cameras, it is really easy to get a correct exposure. And that's because what you see is what you get and you can set highlight alerts. So every time I have something overexposed, it will show red and it gives me that instant feedback to know to kind of back off and make it a little bit darker. Autofocus is really quick and reactive. It's got 121 points, which is pretty much the same as EM1 Mark III uh, and other previous lineups. Obviously, it doesn't have the crazy good features like the OM1, which has AI bird detection and dog and cat mode. I wouldn't really expect that from this little camera anyways. I've been photographing for years with the EM1 Mark II and the EM1X, and it has served me just fine. And I tend to use one small focus point in the middle for most of my subject, and I change it to maybe one surrounded by four for birds in flight, or maybe even a, a five by five grid or something like that, just to cover a little bit more of the frame. I've gotten some questions about how to move the focus point around here. Some people like to use the screen. I'm not used to doing that, so that would just cause me trouble. I move the pad on the back left first, and then I can move it around. Um, I do that because on my right, I have a quick button set up for changing my shooting mode. If you are interested in setting up your own system for wildlife photography, do check out my course. Uh, it covers all the, basically the range of cameras that the OM system has and it's also been updated for the OM-1 with its new menu layout. At first though, I will pretty much always just leave my focus point in the middle and get a safe shot. After that, I will start thinking about composition, and even then, I will get my focus, and I will recompose, and I will get my image. And I use back button to focus. It's really easy to do that when you have the shutter and focus separated. You can see a video I have on setting up the back button for focus if you want to check it out. If for some reason I can't get focus like that either, I always have manual focus available to me and I have peaking set up so I can see right away if I get a sharp subject. Now, one of the really handy things with the Ona 5 is that it's upgraded the image stabilization. So it's now six and a half stop and seven and a half stop with the synchronized lenses. So for this 300 F4 I have on it right now, it is seven and a half stops of image stabilization, which is really handy to have. And I find myself photographing at really slow shutter speed a lot of the time and taking advantage of that image stabilization just so that I can shoot at really low ISO and get the best detail in my images. 
Now the ISO capabilities of this camera is actually pretty good and I've done some tests. I use noise reduction software on most of my photos, especially from you know ISO 800 and above. I pretty much always use a denoise software. I tend to use Topaz denoise because it goes really well with Lightroom, so it's a very quick workflow. But if you don't want to spend that kind of money, then OM Workspace has a really good denoising software as well. As you can see in these images though, you can actually push the ISO quite high and using some denoising software to reduce that noise and the images still look pretty good. Again, my workflow is basically get a couple of safe keepers and then I will lower my shutter speed so I can lower my ISO because I will always try and go for the highest quality image by lowering the ISO. 10 frames per second electronic shutter. I always shoot in silence, so it's always electronic shutter because I mainly photograph wildlife, so I always wanna be as quiet as I can. 10 frames per second is more than enough for most photography subjects. You can change it to high speed burst, which gives you a maximum of 30 frames per second, but then AF and exposure is locked after the first image. So if you have a bird or something like that and it flies you know, away from where you're first focused, you won't be able to capture it again unless you kind of repress the focus. Super benefit of the OM5 for wildlife photography is that it actually has pro capture capabilities. Now it is limited to 14 images pre-shutter, but that is still quite a lot. And considering that most cameras don't even have anything like pro capture, the fact that you can get it in this small package is pretty amazing. So I'm trying to get a little sequence here with pro capture so you can see what it looks like. And I have a set so that I'm taking 14 pre-shutter frames with a limit of 18. So I will only take four more images after I press the shutter. But that usually I can get by with just those 14. I've just left them on just in case. And I'm just gonna try this now so you can kind of get a feel for what 14 frames will get you uh, kind of back in time. Because I'm waiting for the bird now to have flown away and then I press the shutter. That's uh, a really cool feature. And I've changed now to my 4150 f2.8 to give me that f2.8 so that I can not, so I don't have to push my ISO that high. I now have an ISO of 3200 and a shutter of 2500 of a second. I'm also using this lens to give me a wider angle so that there's more space for the bird to fly into. Leaves are very small in the frame, but this is just an example to show you guys what kind of sequence of images you can get. And I can show you here now. So this is the cold hit. Cold hit feeding, and then as it flies away, Now for me as a wildlife photographer, it is really important that the camera can take a punch. I take it out in all kinds of conditions, in snow, freezing cold, and really wet weather. So having the IP53 weather rating, which is the same as pretty much all the OM system cameras, it is a real advantage. I'm sure you've seen those videos where people actually hold some of these cameras under a tap of water. Um, I'm not gonna do that, but it just gives me that confidence that I will always just keep shooting in the rain or any kind of nasty weather. I know it's gonna be able to take it. The OM5 also has updated for high res images. So you can get a 50 megapixel image handheld. And that is a feature that I actually do use every now and then for wildlife photography. Now it's pretty specific situations because you need a subject that's gonna hold still for a little bit of time. I tend to use this for quite slow moving subjects, for instance, like an owl or something like that. I'll show you an image here that I took with the OM1 of an owl earlier this year. And um, using those type of capabilities also means that it keeps noise down and you just get a high resolution image. Now, the body size of the camera is obviously really small, which is an advantage. That's, that's the whole point of this camera. It's supposed to be very small and lightweight, so you can take it with you anywhere. So I find that it's a nice, comfortable grip. It does mean that my hands are a little bit underneath here because my hands are a little bit bigger for this camera. You know, most of the time that's totally fine for me. Uh, the only time I find that that is a little bit uncomfortable if I'm really intensely shooting here wildlife for hours on end. It can get a little bit uncomfortable holding the camera like this. One of the things I really like as a wildlife photographer is using the custom modes. And I will set each one up depending on what I'm shooting, but very often I'll have kind of uh, a generic shooting, just whatever wildlife I'm shooting on the day when I'm in manual mode. 
and then I will change it to the custom modes, for instance, for Pro Capture or Birds in Flight, and I will have these set up ahead of time. Now, there's only one C on the actual dial, but you can program some of the other buttons, C2, C3, C4, to have direct access to, to them with a button. Now, there is not a ton of buttons on the OM5, but there's definitely a few places that you can sneak in one of these custom mode buttons. For instance, the top one up here is one that I will change because I don't change my shooting mode there because it's kind of tricky to get to. But I don't have, I don't mind having a custom mode up there. So I have my shooting mode set to pressing right on the pad instead. Uh, there's also such buttons as you could use the record button because you can change the lever to set to video. Um, and you have a little button in front here. There's definitely some options for getting quick access to the custom modes. The main thing I want to show in this video is that the OM5 is perfectly capable of taking some really good wildlife images. I'm just trying to show you what is possible with this camera, but you have to make up your own mind whether this camera here suits the, the way you shoot, suits your workflow. Do you want a camera that is tiny, small in weight, and has the features that the OM5 has, um, then maybe it's for you. And if not, there's plenty of other cameras to choose from. So I'm just trying to show you what the camera is capable of. And you have to make up your own choice whether it is for you or not. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.